This is Charles Hirskin from University of uh, Berkeley, Anthropology. Uh, you probably, it doesn't need <laughs> introduction, probably you all read his work on, um, um, on Egypt, on the relationship between uh, new media and religiosity and Islam in, uh, in Egypt. But uh, today he's going to talk about his current work, which is about the representation and the traces of Islamic past in uh, contemporary Europe, in, in Spain uh, in particular. Some years now, European political life has devolved to a significant extent around the question of whether and how Muslim immigrants are to be accorded a place within European societies. This issue, is, of course, has also become prominent within the United States, but still to a lesser degree. Many in Europe today have come to view Muslim immigrants as representatives of an alien civilization, one incompatible with and a direct threat to modern European values and freedoms. To proponents of this view, Europe is to be seen as the product of a unique historical trajectory, one whose moral and political virtues were grown from a Christian or Judeo-Christian soil, which Islam does not share. One version of this can be heard in uh, comments by Habermas that I briefly quote. Universalistic egalitarianism from which sprang the ideals of freedom and a collective life in solidarity, he writes, the autonomous conduct of life and emancipation, the individual morality of conscience, human rights and democracy is the direct legacy of a Judaic ethic of justice and a Christian ethic of love. This legacy, substantially unchanged, has been the object of continual critical appropriation and reinterpretation. To this day, there is no alternative to it. And in light of the current challenges of a post-national constellation, we continue to draw on the substance of this heritage. Everything else is just idle postmodern talk. Although this narrative, it starts with a bang, although this narrative is not seamless nor uncontested, it does establish the broader ground upon which opposing political viewpoints on the desirability of Muslim immigrants frequently devolves. In this brief presentation, I want to think about the civ this civilizational narrative of Europe from its southern periphery, a site where the historiographical operations that secure the ident this identity are more brittle, its immunity from competing histories less reliable. I take it as my focus a conflict concerning the ownership and administration of Córdoba's renowned Mesquita Catedral, sometimes known as the Red Mosque, a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the most spectacular and frequently visited ar architectural wonders from the period of Muslim rule in Spain. While this conflict is, conflict is rooted, rooted in a set of historical conditions specific to the Iberian context, it provides a unique vantage point from which to reflect on unsettled ghosts left behind from the history of Islam in Europe. Constructed between the 8th and 10th centuries, the Mesquita Catedral combines a mosque and a Catholic chapel the chapel having been built within the inner sanctuary of the mosque during the 16th century. Since the construction of the chapel five centuries ago up through the present, only Roman Catholic ritual practice has been permitted within the edifice. Beginning in the early 2000s, however, a growing movement among Muslims in Spain and internationally has petitioned the church uh, to allow for Muslim prayer as well. On a few occasions over the last decade, Muslim visitors have defied the ban enacting the words and gestures of Muslim prayer within the space of the Mesquita Catedral, an act that has resulted in their immediate expulsion and, at least on one occasion, arrest. The current conflict over the Mesquita Catedral is solidly anchored in the political landscape of contemporary Spain, insofar as it touches on the close ties between the Spanish church and the conserv conservative Partido Popular, that was in power through much of the last decades, on growing apprehensions about Muslim immigrants in the country, particularly in the aftermath of the 2004 train bombing in Madrid, as well as the romanticized view of the country's plurireligious heritage found among liberal intellectuals, a vision invoked today to advance a multicultural political agenda. These contemporary political reference points, however, inhabit a far more fractured and conflictual historical terrain, as I hope to point out. In my comments here, I focus less on the campaign to open up the Mesquita Catedral for Muslim prayer than on the church's response to this movement. 
This response, as I describe, has centered in a series of legal and administrative efforts to expunge all traces of Islam from the edifice, to secure its status as a sacred Christian space, devoid of any relation to Muslim societies of medieval Iberia, and, as a consequence, to the Muslim visitors who seek to pray in it today. I am interested, that is, in picking up a theme, one of the themes of the workshop. Um, that is, in the church's efforts to construct a Christian space from the Mesquita Cathedral, and in how that project relates to the broader one of conceptually delimiting Europe today as a space into which Muslims can enter only as foreigners, as people out of place and time. <clears throat> 